Is Tulum really as great as people say? Let's find out. In this video, we're going to show you the best of Tulum, what to do, where to eat, and where to stay, and sprinkle in a few practical travel tips. But as great as Tulum is, it's not perfect, so we need to tell you what to watch out for too. Safety, the ins and outs of beach clubs, traffic, and the hazards of tripping over super drunk people on the beach. Anyway, the longer I stayed in Tulum, the more I liked it, and then I kind of loved it. Let me show you why. All right, let's get oriented first. The Mayan ruins are on the north end of Tulum. The city center is northwest, and most of the hotel and restaurant action is central and south central on the beach. Central Tulum Beach is where all the action is. There are tons of hotels and beach clubs in this area, and it's also super loud and probably a better location if you're young and or don't want to sleep much at night. This is also where most of the really good restaurants are, but we're only recommending two hotels in this area because they have something very unique to offer. Six of the 10 hotels we're recommending are on South Tulum Beach, right below this line. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not 20 anymore, so I'm partial to South Tulum. This is where most of the best hotels are and where the beach is much quieter and less developed. The only downside is it's a 15 to 20 minute walk to most of the best restaurants, but I love to walk on the beach, so it was fine for me. We, of course, have strong opinions about Tulum's best hotels. There's a link below to our top 10 resorts video and also links to in-depth reviews for each resort we're recommending. Regardless of whether you follow our advice on where to stay, one of the great things about Tulum is its huge variety of small, design-centric hotels. I didn't see a single mega resort here, and I love that. You can walk for an hour on the beach in one direction, and there are small hotels the whole way. Okay, so a lot of these hotels aren't great, and a bunch of them are in a super loud area, but you have to admit the variety is pretty amazing. So I was kind of expecting to be wowed by some of the design hotels here, but I wasn't expecting incredible restaurants. This was a surprise. If I look back over the past five years and think about my top 10 restaurant experiences, I'd have to say three were in Tulum. I've never had so many great restaurant experiences in such a short amount of time. And yes, I'm not a food critic, but I have traveled and lived all over the world, so I know something about food and happen to be married to a really good cook. But it does kind of beg the question, what's a great dining experience anyway? To me, of course, it includes great food. But maybe here's where I'm a bit different. I think a great dining experience also has to include great ambiance. It's the whole package. Food, decor, music, vibe, and service. And Tulum has so many restaurants that fit this definition. I was blown away by the variety. There's a blog on our website with some info about two of my favorite Tulum restaurants. If you're into good food, then do some research and I suggest booking two to four weeks before you arrive. Be aware though that food, especially at nice restaurants, is relatively expensive in Tulum compared to the rest of Mexico and other developing countries I've been to. So you might want to work in a couple dinners at that taco truck. Besides where to stay and where to eat, is there anything else to do in Tulum? Well, yeah, I think there is. Here are some ideas. As a first timer to Tulum, I felt compelled to visit the Mayan ruins, and I didn't regret it despite some crowds, which I kind of hate. 
Anyway, the ruins are only 20 minutes by taxi from most of Tulum, and you can do the whole door-to-door -door round trip in two to four hours, depending on what time you go and how many selfies you want to take. This walled city used to be a major port and was one of the last Mayan cities built. Your tour guide will give you all the history, which I think is pretty interesting, but it's the architecture and building style that I think's worth seeing. And it's all made more dramatic by the fact that the ruins are on a cliff above the ocean. What a gorgeous setting. If you're gonna go, here are some pro tips. Try to go right when they open or late in the afternoon, maybe an hour before closing to avoid the crowds. If it's crowded and you're impatient like me, look for someone dressed in a shirt like this. If you can find one of these guides and you're willing to pay 10 USD instead of three bucks, you can essentially skip the line. Ever show up at a resort expecting to be able to take a long beach walk only to find out the beach is pretty small? That's not a problem in Tulum. You can easily do a two or three hour round trip beach walk from most resorts. Eight of the 10 resorts we're recommending have this option. Though one is up on a small private beach in the north. But we'll tell you all about that in the review so you don't end up being surprised. The thing to remember about Tulum is the farther south you go, the better. The north end of the beach feels chaotic and crowded and has been stripped of a lot of its natural beauty. While the south has more palm trees and is less crowded and the extreme south end is super quiet and natural. As long as you're on the beach, why not learn to kite surf? I have to say I was tempted and maybe I would have if I wasn't so busy filming hotels. Anyway, it looks super fun, but after watching some of these folks, I realized it's harder than it looks. If you do want to give it a try, there are a few kite surfing schools towards the south end. Tulum has excellent conditions for this sport. For the younger, hipper crowd, you can spend your days at one of the many beach clubs that tend to be bunched on the central part of the beach. These may be good if you're not staying on the beach, and most turn into restaurants at night, but I'd say you're much better off with the restaurants on the non-beach side of the road. There seems to be an inverse relationship with beach views and good food in Tulum. The deal with most of these beach clubs is you can use their sun loungers and pools for free, but free has a special meaning here. You have to buy a minimum amount of booze and or food. The booze should help you forget how bad the music is. Many hotels will let you use their beach clubs too, which might be a better option for those of you who are not hard of hearing. It's the same deal. Minimum food and drink purchase required. <music> yoga is another option for you. Most of the resorts we're recommending have great yoga and wellness programs. Tulum's also known for its spiritual healing, and a few of the resorts I stayed at offer healing sessions which range from sound healing to full-on peyote experiences. You do you. If you need some healing, how about a massage? The higher-end resorts all have spas with hour-long massages starting at around 120 USD. Instead, you might want to try one of these pop-up places on the beach that tend to run between 25 and 50 bucks for an hour. I tried the one next to La Zebra and it was great, but I can't vouch for all these operations. And would a trip to Tulum be complete without a trip to a cenote? I don't know because I didn't do it. And this is the only thing on this list that I didn't do. But worth mentioning because I know it's popular and they look kind of cool. There are about 8 million YouTube videos about this, so I won't add to that clutter. Okay, some quick tips and other things you might want to know. If you want to come to Tulum with small kids, I'd think twice. Many of the best hotels don't allow for kids, or at least don't really cater to them. And there's a lot of drunk people on the beach, too. But we do have one hotel recommendation that's good for kids. There's a link to that below. Tulum's on the East Coast, so no sunsets, unless you go up to the roof of your hotel and see the sunset over the jungle. I did that once and it was pretty cool. There are tons of taxis and all take USD or pesos, but you do have to negotiate each time. Lawyers will enjoy this. 
If you don't already use it, I'd suggest installing WhatsApp on your phone before your trip. All the hotels use it to communicate before you arrive and while you're there. You can order food and get service at most hotels with the app. All right, safety. Um, this is a bit dicey. I felt safe, but I'm an almost six foot white guy and a lot of people think I'm straight. My two teenage daughters were with me for a week and they felt safe too. But there have been some high profile drug related shootings in Tulum and the Yucatan in general. So I can't say it's 100% safe. Gun violence in Mexico is roughly on par with the US on a per capita basis, which I'm not proud of. But if you feel safe in or going to the US, then maybe you won't worry too much about this. But why not research this issue a bit more? I'm happy to have haters hate me for my hotel wrecks, but safety is up to you, so do some homework. I realize that this is a bigger problem for women, so we've included a link below to an article about women's safety in Tulum. Maybe a bigger risk is that sidewalks are not a Tulum thing, so be careful walking down the street. My only negatives about Tulum are that the main street that runs parallel to the beach and where all the great restaurants are can be chock-a-block with fume-spewing vehicles. And the streets are dusty too, so you can feel a bit dirty by the time you show up for that fabulous dinner. And here's a pro tip. Instead of walking down the dusty road, I prefer this sandy version that runs parallel to the beach road. You can get almost anywhere in Tulum via the beach. And then just cut through a resort or a beach club when you get close to where you want to go. Just walk through like you own the place. It also feels a little like college spring break on parts of the beach. But a lot of this can be avoided if you stay in the right place. So pick your resort wisely. If I had to distill down what I love about Tulum, I think it's the great design culture and sense of style here. You can see it in the unique design hotels. Tulum style also comes through in the great variety of restaurants, not just the amazing food, but a really special ambiance, like no other place I've ever been. Tulum even has its own sense of fashion. Tulum started out as a mellow, down-to-earth, spiritual kind of place. It was creatives and spiritual folks who got this place going, and while a lot of the creator mindset's been diluted by all the development and some pretty obnoxious tourists, a lot of the unique creative culture is still here. So I hope we've helped point you in the right direction to discover this special place yourself. Remember, we're supported by our viewers, so help us out by smashing that like button and why not subscribe? Be sure to check out our Tulum Top 10 Resorts video. We cover some really cool places that are pretty swanky, but we have a couple budget picks too, so that everyone can enjoy this magical place. See us in the next video.